Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks to the committee. Thank you all for coming here today. <clears throat> I want to recognize a very important man, an old colleague of mine who has just walked in, and he'll be speaking later on, Bob Lencato. Uh, the thing, uh, Bob, I'm just beginning to speak. You timed it well. Uh, Bob was with Mario Biaggi, whom I'll be referring to in a moment, for many years. Looking back over 40 years, the thing that has made the most vivid impression on me regarding my work, in a personal sense, is that the people who helped me most in the U.S. Congress in the beginning years, from 72 to the 80s, were not Irish and not Catholic. And that has made an enduring impression on this for man a man. They were not Irish, not Catholic. They were Italian Americans, Jewish Americans, African Americans. And that is something Irish Americans ought to never forget. The people who helped most were not even Irish and not Catholic. We must never forget that as an Irish American community. Congressman Mario Biaggi, of course, is the great Italian example. Congressman Ben Gilman, is the great Jewish American example, and both of them are still with us, thank God. And Hamilton Fish, the late Hamilton Fish of New York, a Republican, was the fine Protestant example. Congressman Don Payne of New Jersey is the, the best African American example. Later on in the 1980s, there were a number of Irish Catholic members of Congress who, who did great work and helped me a lot. And chief among them were Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey. He was the man who held the hearing just the other week that Barbara mentioned. Richie Neal from Massachusetts, of course. Tom Manton, Jimmy Walsh, and Joe Crowley, to name just a few. And naturally, without the support of the ordinary Irish American, I could not have done a thing, not a simple thing, on my own. I was supported by thousands of decent Irish Americans, um, ordinary Americans, no big money, no big foundation, no famous rich people helped us, the ordinary Irish American, and that is an old, old story. When I first came to America, October 2nd, 1972, I naturally assumed there would be two groups I could appeal to regarding justice in Northern Ireland. The left wing of the Democratic Party, especially the big Irish names, you all know them, and the Catholic bishops who were known for their interest in international justice and peace in South Africa, in Nicaragua, El Salvador, everywhere. There was a group of social gospel bishops most interested in justice. <coughs> I would base my work in America on three principles. One, a Catholic principle, important for you Catholics uh, out there to remember. It's the official teaching of the church, quote, action on behalf of justice is a constitutive dimension of the preaching of the gospel. Unfortunately, not too many Catholics know that, but let me repeat it. Action on behalf of justice is a constitutive dimension of the preaching of the gospel. In other words, if we do not preach and work and do justice, we are not following the gospel of Jesus. Justice is essential to the gospel of Jesus. 
It is an essential theme throughout the entire Hebrew scriptures or the Old Testament. The second principle I based my work on was an American principle. Respect for international human rights is an integral part of American foreign policy. The third principle it became a caucus principle. U.S. dollars must not subsidize anti-Catholic discrimination in Northern Ireland. Well, this was back in 72, and at first the famous Tip O'Neill was very friendly and supportive. But after a while, when he was lobbied by the British and Irish embassies, he backed off and would put his big hand on my shoulder and say, Father Sean, how can you expect me to be more patriotic than Taoiseach Jack Lynch, Taoiseach Liam Cosgrave, or Taoiseach Gareth Fitzgerald? In other words, they're doing nothing. How can you expect me to do something? And of course, he had a point. But Tip then would go on to seriously collude with the British government. He was speaker from 1977 to 1987. And this famous Irish Catholic working class man of the people who spoke vehemently about El Salvador and South Africa and Nicaragua and who spoke eloquently about the importance of international human rights, banned congressional human rights hearings on Northern Ireland in the House. Human rights hearings were banned from 74 to 1995. How do you think history is going to judge that cover-up and that collusion? But it must be noted here that Garrett Fitzgerald, former Foreign Secretary and former Taoiseach, also claims credit for the banning of congressional hearings on human rights. How can people judge that? How can people possibly justify it? Then the second group we tried to reach out to were the Catholic bishops involved in international justice and peace. I mentioned South Africa, they were all over the globe urging justice and peace for all these countries. So it was a fairly logical um, step for me to say, well, you know, bishops, there's a place called Northern Ireland. What's, what are you doing about that? And their Office of International Justice and Peace here, up by the Catholic U, issued this statement. After due consultation with the Irish bishops and in recognition of the efforts being made by the governments and church bodies directly concerned, we, the U.S. Catholic Conference of Bishops, have concluded that there is no appropriate basis for public intervention in the problems of Northern Ireland, either by this conference or by any branch of the United States government. Remember that. These Catholic bishops who were powerful on all sorts of issues all over the world urging America to do all sorts of good things, says there's absolutely no role for American involvement. Now, do you think for one moment that that statement would have been issued without them checking with the Irish Embassy and indeed the British Embassy? Indeed, the embassies wrote that statement in effect. Because at that time, and I distinguish that, that time from today, of course, that personified and accurately stated the policy of the Dublin government. There is no basis for U.S. intervention.